Well, it looks like we could see the aurora tonight. We had an ejection of a plasma come off of the sun. That's called a corneal mass ejection. You can see that right there, CME. That's corneal mass ejection. And it takes a couple of days for it to reach the Earth. It looks like it'll be reaching it tonight. Now, what this does is it interacts with the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere, the ionosphere, and the magnetosphere, which is where radio waves bounce off of to send the yeah, radio waves out to distant areas. It interacts with the air molecules up there, and that's how you get the colors of the aurora. Now, the question is, can we see this, obviously? Well, one thing we look at is the KP index. That's basically how far south the aurora can get. Now, around sunset, a 3, that's really not that great, but it increases as we head toward uh, the late night, peaking 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. at about a 6. Now, obviously, you're wondering, what the heck does a 6 mean? I'll show you on a map here. Basically, uh, this is the general area is how far south it's going to get. You can see a KP of 5. That goes just about along the U.S.-Canadian border. Now, to get a good aurora in Wyoming, we want to have at least a 7. And that comes down here through New England, the southern Great Lakes states, and through the northern part of Wyoming and up toward the Pacific Northwest. Now, it'll be right in between that. That's going to be a 6. A more detailed map shown here. You can see uh, much of Canada. You see in the red, that's just about a slam dunk for seeing the aurora. See this red line right here? We're right on the edge if this is a true six. Now, it's never a true six. Remember back in April, about the 23rd, I believe, they said it's going to be a six, but it ended up being a seven or an eight. We had a beautiful display of the aurora. But then again, it might not be as uh, good as that. We might not see much of anything. Faith weather is very fickle. Just want to alert you guys to the chance of seeing this. So some viewing tips if you want to take a look at this. Get away from city lights. This is Wyoming. It's not going to be very hard to do, obviously. Look to the north northeast, that's where it's going to originate from, and allow your eyes to adjust to this. Now, it may disappear as a glow on the horizon. You really want to see it, get your cell phone out, put it in night mode, turn the exposure up, you can see those colors more. Now, if you want to take some pictures of this, for photography, you want to use a longer exposure, at least 5 to 10 seconds. You can turn it up as high as 25 or 30. You want to make the colors really pop on it. But if you want to take a picture of it, especially if you're using a standalone, a mirrorless, or a DLSR, Use a tripod if possible because it's hard to hold the camera steady for that long and the images could turn out to be a little blurry. Now the final thing you're wondering is what's the sky cover going to be because if it's cloudy, we're not going to see it. Now there will be some clouds coming through a few showers during the day. So around 11 o'clock you still see some areas of clouds across mainly western portions of the state, mainly clear conditions further east. Now the good news is with those showers ending we should begin to see those clouds break up a little bit as we get later in the night. So 2 o'clock you can see other than over here across the Azorcas and the Cody area, most areas will be clearing out. It's like to 4 o'clock, which may be the maximum of it. Most areas should have at least uh, partly cloud to mostly clear skies across the area with the best viewing conditions the further east you go. Happy stargazing, everybody.